If you're planning to start preparing for NEET PG and by starting, I mean you have not done any kind of course any time of your life. You are not familiar with what MCQs look like, you have no idea how many questions you get on the exam and you have absolutely no idea what important topics are there for your exam. Then it is going to be difficult, not impossible, but definitely difficult. But, but, but if you are someone who has done at least one of them, then you can actually do it even if you start now. But the key is to have a plan and more important than that is actually sticking to it like very quick. Now, before you start saying you don't fall into any of that and you are an absolute anomaly and are starting from absolute zero, just hear me out. See, you have passed your professional MBBS exam and are here, right? It simply means you are familiar with the subject and have some idea about it. So what does it mean? It means you're in the game. So don't tell me you're starting from absolute zero. But at the same time, remember that not all of you are the same. Some of you are blessed with great understanding of the language and the subject and memory, while some of you are not. Some of you have met amazing teachers and have amazing seniors and some of you don't. And that is why you may be different from your friend who has gone to the same college and was in the same class. The one subject um, you are good at might be very difficult for your friend. So just because something has worked for someone doesn't necessarily mean it should work for you as well. So my aim here is to lay down a few fundamentals for you to make your own plan and customize it based on your specifications, based on your strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so let's get on with it. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Abbas Ali, a full-time orthopedic surgeon, the faculty of orthopedics. So the first question is how much content should we cover and in what time? See, you cannot have a fixed time block for each subject. You need to be able to give it the time required to get at a certain level of knowledge. Now, what is that certain level of knowledge required? My number for you is at least 60 to 70% of each subject, starting with the high yield areas first. And that is an important fundamental. Why? Because you know you won't be able to do all of it and you can only do the 60% necessary. So you will automatically start focusing on areas that are important rather than the crap that is rarely tested on the exams. So how do we know what those important things are? The best place to start for that is previous year questions. See, whenever you plan to start a subject, the first thing I want you to do is do the previous year questions. This will not only up your game in repeat questions, but it will also give you a sense of where you need to spend your hours rather than doing everything across the subject. See, when you start solving the previous year questions, I am sure there will be many things you don't understand, but also many things that you easily understand. That is okay because this exercise will help us proceed further with confidence because now you know what they usually ask. And honestly, it's not something out of this world. Now, what should you use as your base or core material to study. You can uh, use your old notes if you have attended any classes or watched videos. If you have not and are going to start now, just stick to the most concise versions of your source, any source. If you're using Marrow, stick to revision videos and the soon to come test and discussion rather than the regular videos. Use the notes as a reference when watching the videos. This way you will not have to re-watch the videos if you miss something or don't grasp something. Mark and underline the important areas now itself because you're not going to come back. Also, don't mark everything. You will know what to mark because you have seen the previous year questions and their topics. But sir, what about the question bank? See, I think doing the whole question bank right now is neither possible nor the best use of your time. So this is what I suggest. Quickly go through the whole question bank at least once. No, 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 hear me out. Read the question, think about the answer and check the answer. In the answers, you will see a figure that will tell you what percentage of people got the answer correct. If 60% students got it correct, that is something you should definitely know. This way, if there is something that you don't know and most of the students have got it wrong, leave it and move forward. So you will save a lot of time. But what about the regular videos or attending the classes? Do they have a place? See, when you're reading like this, there will be times you will feel you don't get the whole picture about the topic. And this will keep on eating you, bothering your brain. I know the answers. I am getting it right, but I really don't know how and why I'm getting it right. It's okay, na? you're getting it right now. You can't know everything. If you're getting the answer right, that's fine. But there are certain topics of certain subjects that make it impossible to answer unless you have absolute 
clarity of the concept. For those rare instances, you can go back to the regular videos, understand that standalone topic and move on. But trust me, most of the topics you'll be able to fill in the gaps with your assumptions and basic knowledge. And that is usually enough. Let me give you an example. Once I went to this Karan Johar movie with my wife and I missed the first half an hour because my wife was getting ready. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It was not her mistake. It was my fault. There was so much traffic on the roads. The point is, even though we walked in half an hour late, the story still made sense to us because Karan Johar. Now imagine if it were a Christopher Nolan movie and we had missed the first five minutes, we would miss the important plot points and end up scratching our heads. So if it's one of those very important topics and you're unable to grasp it completely, and again, it is very, very essential for your exam. Only if it's essential for your exam, go ahead and refer the regular videos to understand it better. Otherwise, if it's not important and you don't understand it, let it go, avoid it. Now, what about questions? See, we all know that we don't have to be master drivers to learn how to drive a car. You just need to know the basics and you start doing it. And that's the same thing with practicing questions. I feel the moment you're familiar with the topic and you can understand basic English, I suggest you start practicing at least 100 questions every day. Dekho yaar, this is an important exercise to number one, overcome the fear of doing the questions. And number two, it also helps you mastering a very underrated skill. That is the exam skill. The more you do it, the better you get at answering questions on the exam, sometimes even without knowing the topic. Okay, questions to TK, sir. What about grand tests? See, I wouldn't worry too much about grand tests just yet. I can start them once my first read is over because I'm just starting to read now. Okay, great. Now, when should I finish the first reading and start my revisions? See, I would give a good two to three months for you to finish your first reading. After that, you should plan your revisions. I've already made a video about revisions and the fundamentals to keep in mind for planning your revisions. Just make sure you do at least two quick revisions before you go for the exam. If you ever find yourself in time crunch, I want you to keep these two things in mind. Number one, at any cost, avoid going back to the full form of content, whether it's regular videos or classes, don't do that. At the same time, if you don't know something and it is important for your exam and you find yourself struggling to remember or understand, don't hesitate. Go back, refresh the information quickly rather than beating yourself about it. Make a mnemonic, make a story, memorize it right there, right now. Try to remember it and then move on. There is no time to postpone it because if you are forgetting something that is important, you will forget it again. I know this takes time and I have been telling you to not do things that take a lot of time, but please understand spending time here is worth it as you are doing it for the most critical areas of your exam. Therefore, saving time does not mean not studying. It just means not doing the unnecessary things again and again. Isn't this the classical doubt? This is a million dollar question. Na, kya mujhse hoga ki nahi? See, if I tell you, you can do it, you will think I am giving you false sense of hope. And if I say you can't do it, you will think I am demotivating you. But instead of telling you any of that, let me tell you this. See, I've spoken to so many people who have cracked the exams, who have failed many times, who have gotten through and who are still struggling. And this is what I have concluded. There are people who have cracked this exam with less time in hand. Also, there are people who didn't do it even with more time and all of them had different things they did. But there is this one thing I have noticed that is common among all of them and that is their commitment to the task. This was the single common thing I noticed among anyone who could crack the exam in this limited time. So if you can honestly commit yourself at least six to seven hours of undisturbed study every day, I don't see any reason why you can't crack this exam. This is the most important few months of your life, isn't it? Everything else can wait, but this can't. You have to get down and do this. And if this is still not possible for you because of your life and work, you can't give six to seven hours every day, then there is this last ditch effort kind of a plan. This plan is basically trying to crack the exam only with tests. It may or may not work, but it's definitely definitely better than not doing anything. It's this video right here. You can check it out if you want to. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.